Hi everyone, I'm Dr. John Duyard, and today I want to talk about this crazy thing that a lot of people have where they crash in the afternoon. Around 3 o'clock, they're exhausted. They're lining up at Starbucks. They're, they're nibbling on their candy, reaching into their desk drawer for some jelly beans or something because their blood sugar is crashing and they just have no energy and they just want to take a nap. So when I teach at Ayurveda College, which I've been doing for decades, um, I always teach my students, I say, you know, the most important question that you can ask your patients that gives you so much information is how do you feel between 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6 in the afternoon? And if they tell you that they're crashing, they're craving, they're tired, they're lethargic, they're not good, then that tells you that their blood sugar is crashing. So. This ties into circadian medicine. It ties into, ties into the Ayurveda clock. Ayurveda was all about living in sync with the natural cycles. That's now Nobel Prize winning science. It's called circadian medicine. And we know that there are biological clocks that turn on, turn on and turn off during the day. And they turn on digestion and they turn on the brain and your intelligence at different times of day and night, right? So this is now well-known Nobel Prize winning science. It's Ayurveda 101, understanding that. So we know that between 10 o'clock and 2, the digestive system is the strongest time of the day. And this is an important time for us to eat our food. The afternoon between 2 o'clock and 6 is what we call the vata time of day. So the 10 o'clock 2 time is the pitta time, digestive time. The 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock is the vata time, which is the brain, the nervous system, governed by our central nervous system. So you could say that from the Ayurvedic perspective, the biological clocks that turn on digestive strength are happening between 10 o'clock and 2 when we should eat and the time of day that we should be thinking and having the most mental clarity is between 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6. Exactly the time when everybody's crashing and burning, which really doesn't make any sense, right? So this is what I want to talk about and I want to talk about how we can sort of unravel that a little bit. Well, first of all, if your tiredness in the afternoon is only because you ate a big meal and you have a food coma exhaustion in the afternoon, that's a little different than the circadian medicine issue that I want to talk about. <clears throat> but I will talk about the food coma piece just a little bit. <clears throat> so when you eat a big meal and you eat it on the run and it's not well prepared, it's going to be hard to digest. And it creates what Ayurveda calls ama, right? Um, it's sort of like... Um, one of the analogies for that is cooking rice. If you took rice and you put it in a pot and you heated up the water and you put the rice in and boiled it and then turn it off and simmer it and the rice is now simmering and then all of a sudden you want to add a little more rice to it because you need more food. And now the rice is simmering, you put rice in there, more water, you stir it up, boil it and start to, I mean, this is not going to make rice. This is going to be what we call ama in Ayurveda, which is really indigestible food. Um, so the same thing happens when we eat processed food, refined food, we eat and nibble all day long. This creates this inability for you to make real rice. You just have this rice that's simmering and you add this new rice, dry rice with water, try to bring it to a boil. It's not going to work. That's exactly what happens in our digestive system. That digestive ama creates tiredness and heaviness and puts you to sleep. So one of the ways to avoid that post afternoon big lunch food coma where you're exhausted and you want to nap is to take time, relax, and digest your food. And that's a really important piece of the puzzle. The Ayurvedic uh, saying that says, if you eat standing up, death looks over your shoulder, you know, makes sense here. When you're stressed out eating on the run gobbling, you activate your sympathetic fight or flight, run away from a bear, don't digest anything nervous system. When you relax your system and sit down, relax, say grace, you know, connect with the food in a relaxed way, it activates the parasympathetic system, which is your rest and digest nervous system. It tells you that you're going to digest your food and this is what you should be doing. So if you're eating on the run, you clearly are going to have a higher chance of a food coma. So if you get the food coma, just try having that nice big meal, relax and eat. Don't stop eating the big meal because that's an important time of the day to eat your food. It's the biological time to do it. Take time and relax and eat it in a slow way. Chew your food and see if that doesn't 
allow you to have the time to digest and deliver that food and also make sure the quality of the food is, is well cooked and not processed or, or refined. So then we have the circadian issue, which is, you know, what happens that in the middle of the day um, and why is it so important to eat our big meal in the middle of the day? Well, studies shown, and there's many of them, and I cite that in the article with this video, there's studies that show that when you eat a breakfast and a lunch, compared to a lunch and a dinner, people lose more weight. It was also compared to eating six meals a day, the same amount of calories at breakfast and lunch versus the same amount of calories spread over six meals per day. They found that people lost weight, more significant weight. Their blood sugars were lower. Their amount of fat built up in their liver was less. So significant benefits when we follow the circadian rhythms of having more of our food on the front end than the evening back end. So there's just a ton of studies to do that. So when you eat the food, when the body's saying, I can digest it, you fill the tank with gas. And then between two, three, four, five, and six, when the brain nervous system biological clocks turn on and they say, where's my food? I mean, the brain takes about 2% of the body weight, but it burns about 20% of the sugar. So now it's two o'clock in the afternoon, your brain's going, I want 20% of the sugar and you had a salad in front of your computer or you nibbled something or had a cup of coffee or ate some chips or whatever and you didn't take time to eat a relaxing meal and the brain got this message that I tasted some chips, I tasted something. So the brain's thinking I'm gonna get fed here any minute but all it was was a salad, not enough of a meal to deliver in the brain's lion's share of the food. It's a little bit on the greedy side. They actually call the brain greedy because it takes so much of the nutrients and when the brain is not getting its food, it's going to create an emergency craving response. So it's going to pull down the menu and go, okay, I'm not getting what I need. How do I get it? And you're going to start craving sugar, candy, chips, coffee, chocolate, or a nap. And that's why you crash and burn or crave in the afternoon. And when you get that injection of the sweet or, or the caffeine or the chocolate, that's going to give you an injection and what goes up unfortunately comes down. So when it goes up you get this stimulate on the way to feeling really good but then shortly after you're on the way to feeling really bad and that creates a little bit of an emergency response and the brain goes "Ooh, I'm feeling really low I need to get back up where I, I like it so you eat more candy or whatever and you stimulate yourself again on the way to feeling good but it's only short-lived then you're on the way to feeling bad. So many people find themselves living their life on the way to feeling good and on the way to feeling bad, on the way to feeling good, on the way to feeling bad, and very little time spent on the actual feeling good peaks of those mountaintops. We end up on the roller coaster ride of blood sugar, ups and downs and ups and downs. By three, four, five, six o'clock at night, you're driving home, you're crashing, you can't keep your eyes open. We've created a high, low blood sugar phenomena that puts huge amounts of stress on your adrenals and your blood sugar, and it sets us up for you know, all types of blood sugar pre-diabetic issues. And when you keep pushing the body to that stress response where the brain pulls down the menu to get emergency fuel to get you out of that hole, however you're genetically predisposed to break down, however that might be, you increase the risk of that happening because stress is a degenerative chemistry. But if you were to have a nice meal and have you know, and then eat it in a relaxed way in the middle of the day for breakfast and lunch, you're gonna have the ability and the reserve in your tank to give the brain the fuel that it needs between two, three, four, five, and six in the afternoon so it gets what it needs and it doesn't pull down the menu, crave a stimulant, set you up for the highs and the lows and the highs and the lows and a unstable roller coaster ride through the afternoon so you come home so spent from riding the roller coaster all day long all you, need, all you can think of is a glass of wine to just shut down and chill. And this is a way a lot of people live, but it's a dangerous road to hoe because, like I said, the more stress you incur by not having stability throughout the afternoon, the more vulnerable we are to breaking down. And that's the, the beauty of Ayurveda, is that we should be finishing our day, one of the signposts of this, with the same energy as we started. That's the goal. And that's my goal for you from this lecture and this article is to finish your day with the same energy that you started with. And that's gonna happen by taking time to have a nice relaxing breakfast, a nice relaxing lunch, 
and a small light supper with nothing in between and just stay hydrated. All right, that's the truth. Let me know how that works for you. Read the article associated with this video. I go into great detail. And then I also mentioned in the article that if, if you eat the relaxing meal and you still get a food coma, we have a digestive imbalance. And I give you articles, I link articles to the uh, other articles that tell you how to troubleshoot your digestion and fix that. The one thing you don't want to do is stop eating lunch or have a little tiny lunch. Lunch is the circadian time to have a nice, big, relaxing meal. And if you just say, well, I feel bad when I eat it or I feel tired when I eat a big lunch, so I don't eat a big lunch, well, what we've just done is, is you know, sort of um, created a bigger problem by just mitigating the symptom by stop eating the meal that we desperately need, which is one of the most important meals of the day. Breakfast and lunch are critical. Supper comes from word supplemental, always been a supplemental or um, soup-like meal optional. Okay, thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Darren. Do you like this video? Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by Life Spa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at lifespa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.